Just I was asking you about, you said that the leaks are real, but the news is fake. I guess I don't understand. Uh, it seems that there's a disconnect there. If the information coming from those leaks is real, then how can the stories be no, fake? The reporting you know? is fake. And if look, I may ask, look, I just want to ask. Jim, you know what it is? Here, here's the thing. The public isn't, you know, they read newspapers, they see television, they watch. They don't know if it's true or false because they're not involved. I'm involved. I've been involved with this stuff all my life. But I'm involved. So I know when you're telling the truth or when you're not. And I'll tell you what else I see. I see tone. You know the word tone. The tone is such hatred. I'm really not a bad person, by the way. No, but the tone is such... I do get good ratings, you have to admit that. The tone is such hatred. That's from a 2017 news conference less than a month after Donald Trump took office. During that news conference that had been called to announce his new labor secretary, Alexander Acosta obviously went in a different direction. We're joined now by Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones, David Korn. His new book is out today titled American Psychosis, a historical investigation of how the Republican Party went crazy. David, congratulations on the book. It's good to see you. I want to set the table a little bit with a bit of a summary from the book on Mother Jones titled, It Didn't Start with Trump, the decades-long saga of how the GOP went crazy, reads in part, there is a well-established record for more than 70 years the Republican Party has stoked animus and conspiracies, often capitalizing on unfounded apprehension about internal enemies subverting the nation. In the 1950s, the foe was Reds. In the 1960s and beyond, it was black people demanding social justice and societal change. In the 1970s, the new right and the religious right claimed liberals and Democrats and gays were plotting to destroy the nation. Tea partiers asserted Obama headed a sinister cabal bent on turning the United States into a socialist hellhole. Trump and his devotees say the same about today's Democrats. The GOP hasn't been all extremism all the time, but since at least the 1950s, the party has consistently boosted extremism, prejudice, paranoia, and rage. Sometimes this has led to the GOP prevailing in political battles. In other instances, voters have beaten back this cynical gambit. So it didn't start with yeah. Trump. Everybody right. looks at Trump and right. then you go back, you say, oh, no, it was the Tea Party. Oh, no, it was Sarah Palin. Oh, no, it was Newt yeah. Gingrich. And you take it all the way back to the 1950s, at least. It's interesting. We, a lot of us have lived through a lot of this. And you don't always see the patterns when they're happening. You don't you know, connect the dots. And when I started this book, I, I was, I didn't expect it to be so timely and so relevant to the conversation we're having now. I just thought it was an interesting intellectual exercise. But if you go back just say to the 50s and look at someone like Joe McCarthy, he claimed literally there was conspiracy in the U.S. government led by George C. Marshall, the Secretary of Defense, that was plotting to hand over the United States to the Soviet Union. Not that their policies were wrong or they were misguided or they weren't tough enough, but there was actually a cabal, a secret plot. And it's, in a lot of ways, it's like QAnon today without the baby eating and all the sex stuff. And the Republican Party lionized Joe McCarthy for years before he went off the rails and they finally distanced themselves a little bit from him. But you can take that point and you can move it through the ages through the decades up to Donald Trump. You know, the, the, the summation you just read hit some of those points. Uh, Richard Nixon made a deal with white segregationists, white supremacists, extremists to get the nomination in 68. Ronald Reagan embraced the religious right in the late 70s when they were claiming that gay people wanted to kill Americans and basically destroy Christianity and take over America. And, you know, we, we forget it was only a couple of years ago that the Tea Party people were out there, again, with this conspiracy theory that, that Obama purposely wanted to destroy the nation, an eternal enemy. And the key point through all this is not the crazy stuff on the right, but that the Republican Party mm -hmm. kept exploiting it and encouraging it. Boehner embraced the Tea Party, had them hold rallies on the Capitol steps while they were promoting racist and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories about Barack Obama. And Joe, in every one of these eras, as you tick back through history, there is the central figure, there's Donald Trump, there's Joe McCarthy, and then there are all those Republicans who, most of them knowing better, go along for the ride. Right. And David, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get around to agreeing with you at the end, but be patient <laughs> with me at the beginning. <laughs> Because Go you're, you're going to think that I'm, I'm preaching a moral equivalence. I'm not. 
But I'm saying, though, we have been a nation over the past 50, 60, 70 years that's been paranoid, whether it was uh, uh, conspiracy theories around JFK's assassination or Neil Armstrong walking on the moon or Democrats saying that George H.W. Bush and the CIA took crack into inner cities uh, to, to harm black people or whether it was the truthers after 9-11. Uh, we have dealt with this, and sometimes it's come from the left. Sometimes it's come from the right. What, 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 what disturbs me so much, though, now are the very people that I knew best, the people that worked with me on my campaign starting in 1994, the people whose doors, I was just talking about knocking on doors, the people mm -hmm. I knew were people that actually... They, they watched news, they saw the news, they, 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 you could have a conversation with them, they could say something crazy to you, and I'd say, well, no, no, you need to read this, and they'd read it, they'd be fine. Now I talk to those people, and they say, oh, I don't, I don't read the news anymore. I just don't follow it because you just can't mm -hmm. trust the mainstream media. Sorry, you can't trust mainstream media. I go, oh, oh, so how do you get your information? They get it from QAnon, they get it from Chinese religious cult websites, uh, they get it from the most bizarre places. And so when that clip of Donald Trump ran, I, I thought, I'm glad we led with it because we are now in a post-fact world. I can't even talk to a lot of friends and family members and, and people I, I, I care so much about and I have for my whole life based on facts. We just have to say, let's just not talk about it because they will say, well, I read this on a Chinese, they don't say a Chinese religious cults website, but that's what it is. Or I read this QAnon theory, or somebody will say, oh, Mike Pence, they weren't trying to kill Mike Pence. Did they have guns? Swear to God, people with advanced degrees. It's Pope. How? Tell me about that development, because by the way, I've been in the Republican Party mm -hmm. until about five years ago. It, w it was never this bad. How did it get this bad? Well, Joe, when they started lining up publicity appearances for, for me in the book, I asked, am I going on Morning Joe? Because you are my favorite recovered Republican. And I was very interested in what, how you would approach this. Because w while you're right that there has been conspiracy theories and wacko ideas on the left and the right, what I show in American Psychosis is that the Republican Party far more than anything on the Democratic side has encouraged and exploited this. You can't go back and find, in terms of leading Democrats, I'm talking about presidential candidates right. and top Democrats who embrace this. There's, there's no equivalent to John Boehner saying to the Tea Party, you're right, come into the door, I want to make you part of the Republican Party. There's nothing like the John Birch Society helping uh, Barry Goldwater win the nomination in 64. A, a, there's nothing, there's no equivalent to Pat Robertson and his looniness being used by both George Bushes to become president on the left or with the Democratic Party. So I do think there's an asymmetry here and that the Republican Party has taken advantage for decades. And, you know, if things right. have gotten worse, I do agree with that. But if you go back and look at some of the crazy ideas that were being generated about the Red Skier in the 50s, yeah, there were some Soviet right. spy rings, but there weren't Reds under the beds everywhere. And there was sort of a panic there that the Republicans took advantage well, of. And, and, and David, David, I always, I, I, I always, and, and I think that's what I always say. My point is, yes, I could find you polls that show a large number of Democrats believed in 2005 2006 that George W. Bush mm -hmm. was involved uh, in 9-11. Not a single Democratic leader fed right. that hatred, fed that paranoia. They just never did it. Uh, but I do want to say one thing, I, because we always are thinking these are the worst times ever. These are, mm -hmm. And I think, I think constitutionally they are. But my God, I went back and I read Larry Tai's book on McCarthyism. Like, people died. People yep. killed themselves. Careers mm -hmm. were destroyed. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the most, for me, one of the most heartbreaking moments uh, was when Ike had a chance to condemn Joe, Joe McCarthy on the campaign trail. And Ike's a hero of mine. He was in Wisconsin. He would have won anyway. Refused to say a damn thing mm -hmm. about it. And, and there are parallels to that and where we are today.
Yet, when I came across that story for this book, and it's the start of one of the chapters, I was moved too. You know, I'm not a big Republican, not a big Ike fan, but he had, he almost had a moment of courage, and he was going to do it, and he was talked out of it by other Republican poobahs who said, if you do this, it's going to hurt our Republican chances in Wisconsin in the national election, and, and hurt us as we try to draw Catholics into the Republican Party. And that really, in some ways, is almost the, the original sin. The original turning yeah. point here, which they said, this is crazy. And Ike knew McCarthy was crazy. Uh, was going after the army and people that he liked. And he wouldn't stand up to it because of political uh, transactionalism. And yeah. after that point, and it happened again and again and again in the party that you once loved. 